Meryl, I wanted to bring you in at that point as well. I mean, it's an astonishing performance as Catherine Graham. I wonder when you were coming to the story, how much the attraction was to the whole story and how much to the chance to spotlight Catherine Graham, who was obviously this figure who perhaps hadn't had the spotlight in the past, where she should have done. Well, I thought what, what was interesting about the screenplay was that it, it, it fell to a woman to hold the line for press freedom at a time when women were excluded from any kind of uh, leadership role in the press. There were no women reporters. That was very unusual. Our friend Nora Ephron, to whom this film is dedicated, graduated from Wellesley, ran the paper there, <coughs> went to Newsweek to um, interview to be a, to be a um, reporter. At that time, Catherine Graham owned Newsweek. And the interviewer told her she was very welcome. She was a brilliant woman. She's very welcome to be a researcher, a copy girl, or a secretary. But reporters were men. I look around this room, and I see many, many women. And you would not be here in 1971. So it was a different world. And so for the, this crucial, crucial decision to hold the line and to risk everything, to, fall, to have that fall to a woman who was really alone in her position, um, that's what interested me, both sure. holding the line for press freedom and the fact that it was a transitional moment for women. I mean, the post is a film, obviously, with your extraordinary performance at the centre, but also pivotal roles for women behind the camera as well. You know, mentioned the screenplay, which is co-written by Liz Hannah. Amy Pascal here as, as co-producer. I'm going to ask you, Meryl, first, but I'd be interested in, in Tom and Stephen and your takes on this as well. Whether you think we've reached a stage in the film industry where it's, it's telling stories about women is, is a wonderful thing, but also they have to be stories being told by women. Meryl? Yes, I think it's important that the stories be about women, that, that there be, you know, parity, equal. There, half the world is female, half the world is male. We have different tastes, we have different interests. Sometimes they dovetail, sometimes they don't. It just seems like the predominance of the offerings from Hollywood have been usually, and, and around the world, have been stories driven by, driven by men, that's great. Many of the films have been fantastic. But um, yes, they should be made by women. Mostly, they should be greenlit by women. Um, I think if women were in equally, equally represented in the agencies, at the heads of studios, on the corporate boards that own the studios, the world would be a different place. Tom and Steve, go ahead. I, I think the thing to keep in mind also is there's many, many more women directors, not enough of them, but many, many more making, sig telling sig significant stories and making a real place for themselves. Um, Handmaid's Tale is, is one such example. Um, uh, so is the film Mudbound, Lady Bird, um, uh, Wonder Woman. You know, uh, there, is a, uh, there is a new kind of story that is being told that may not be, uh, there was a time also where a lot more women ran the, the green light system at different studios, Stacy Snyder at Universal and now at Fox. Um, uh, you had Stacey bankrolled our film. Ba she yeah. bankrolled our film. Uh, uh, Sherry Lansing, many years, was the final word at Paramount Pictures. I mean, I mean, this is this is this is not revisionist history. This is just the ebb and flow, the sine wave of women's involvement at the highest levels. And then when there, when there was a dearth of women at the highest levels, in 1971, when the story was told, there were no women women CEOs of any Fortune 500 countries uh, companies until Catherine Graham, she was the first one. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Yeah.